If you are struggling to understand how the HTTP request node actually works and how to use it within your NET and workflows, then this video is for you. Because today I'm going to fully explain how the HTTP request node works and how to use it within your NET and workflows. So by the end of this video, you will exactly know how to use this node so you can connect with every API you want. Okay, so why is the HTTP request node so important? Well, it is so important because it is going to allow you to connect with every app you want. And NetN already provides a lot of apps that you can easily connect with, but not every app is standing natively here on NetN. So if this is the case, then you can use the HTTP request node to connect with this app, even though it is not standing natively on NetN itself. And that is why it is so important to actually understand how to use the HTTP request node, because this is going to make your automation so much better. Okay, so let's take a look in the HTTP node. And the first thing that we're going to see is the method. And the method is basically going to be the action that this HTTP request node is going to perform. So we can pick from multiple methods. We have the delete, get, head, options, patch, post, and put. From this list of methods, we're going to use two methods the most. And these are going to be get and post. Okay, so get is where you're going to retrieve data. So for example, retrieving data from your customer profiles or retrieving data from an order history. And then post is where you're going to send data. So for example, sending a message or submitting a form. Besides the get and the post, you have the other methods, but these methods are not being used that often. So it is not really important to know how these methods work if you want to know how to use the HTTP request node. Next, you have the URL, and this is going to be the end destination of where your request is going to send data to. So in our case, it is going to send data to example.com. But there are two different URLs that you can send because you have a static URL and you can send dynamic URLs. Because now it is put on fixed, so this is going to be a static URL, so this is always going to be the same destination. But you can also put it on expression, and then you can dynamically enter the URL in this field. So then the destination is going to be different every single time. Next we have authentication, and here you can add the credential for your HTTP request. So in authentication, you can put it on predefined credential type, or you can put it on generic credential type. So predefined credential type is basically going to be that NetN has already made the OAuth connection with the app, so you don't have to do this manually. So if you put it on predefined credential type, then you can select your credential type, and then you can pick from every app you want. But with a generic credential type, you can fully customize your credential, so then you can pick from basic, header, or OAuth. And what is very nice when creating a generic credential type is that you have to only set it up once, and then you can use it throughout all of your projects. So this can make building your HTTP request so much faster. Next, we have the send query parameters, and these are going to be filters or options that you're going to send with your request. So if we toggle this switch on send query parameters, then we can see that we can specify our query and we can pick from using fields below. So then we have the name and the value, or we can use it by using JSON. So an example of a send query parameter could for example be the name category and the value premium. So then we said that we only want to get all of our data from the category premium. And this is how you can use the query parameters to filter out the things that you do not want and to filter out the things that you do want. The next thing is going to be send headers, and headers are basically going to carry the metadata of your request. So if you toggle the switch on send headers, then we can see that we have to specify our headers if we want to use fields below, or if we want to use JSON. And these headers are used to, for example, send data about the content type that you are going to send. So if you're going to send your content in JSON, or if you're, for example, going to send it in HTML. But headers are also used to send authentication keys. So we have just discussed the authentication, but this is only one way on how you can select your authentication, because you can also send your authentication key in a header. So how this, for example, could look is name authorization and then value your API key. So with the headers, you are also able to send credentials with your HTTP request. But I will still suggest to use the authentication tab to send your credentials, because in here you only have to create your credentials once, and then you can use it throughout all of your workflows. But when you are using send headers, then you only have created it for this HTTP request, and then you cannot reuse it in other HTTP requests. So then you have to remake it every single time. By the way, if you like this video so far, then please do not forget to like and subscribe as this will really help us. The next thing is going to be send body and the body is going to carry all of the data for your request. Okay, so if you toggle the send body switch on, then we have to select the body content type and we can pick from form URL encoded, form data, JSON, edit and binary file and raw. When you're going to select your body content type, it is important to know what your app that you're trying to connect with is going to expect. So if they're going to expect a JSON, they're going to put your body content type on JSON. 
But if you're going to expect a fail, then you're going to put it on edit and binary fail. Okay, so let's for example say that we put it on JSON. Then we here see that we have to specify the body and we can specify it with using fields below. So then we get the name parameter and then we get the value parameter. But we can also put it on using JSON. And using JSON is used most often when you're going to send your body. Okay, so here we have a simple example. So we have the result limit on five and then the username is power.ai. So this is now going to be the body that we're going to send in our request. Okay, so now we have covered all of these six main components from an HTTP request. But if you want, we can also add options. So the options that we can add are batching, ignore SSL issues, lowercase headers, redirects, response, pagination, proxy, and timeout. And we are going to cover all of these options so you know what they are and how you should use them. So the first option is going to be batching, and batching is going to allow us to send multiple items at once. So normally when we do not use batching, then we can only send one item at a time. But now if we turn on batching, then we can send multiple items at once. So in the batching, we can change the items per batch and it's going to be the amount of items that is going to be sent at once. And then we also have the batch interval and it's going to be the amount of time that we're going to wait until we're going to send the next batch of items. Next we have ignore SSL issues and this is going to turn off security checkings for encrypted connections. But NetN already says that this is an insecure option, so you should use it at your own risk. The next option is going to be lowercase headers, and this is going to turn all of your header tags that you've entered in the sent headers to lowercase. And this can be useful if you're, for example, connecting to a system that needs all of its headers in lowercase. The next option is going to be redirect. So if the app that you're trying to request data from is, for example, saying that your data is moved to a different location, then this redirect is immediately going to go to that location to still get your data without you having to do something manually. So if you're, for example, use a URL that has changed, then your data is going to be stored on a different location. So then this redirect is going to go to that new location to still get your data without you having to do anything manually. The next option is going to be response. And this is basically what data you're going to get back from the request that you have made. The next option is going to be pagination. So sometimes when you make a request to a service, then you get a lot of data back from that service. And then it is too much to process for n at n at once. So what you then have to do is that you then have to turn on pagination. So this is going to make multiple requests where you're going to receive one piece at a time. So eventually you still have all of the pieces and you still have all of the data, but now you prevented an error because now you didn't get all of the data at once, which will give you an error. But now you got one piece at a time, which eventually still got you all of the data. The next option is going to be proxy. And this is going to send your data to an intermediate server until it reaches its final destination. And then you have timeout. And this is going to be the maximum amount of time that you're going to wait for a response until you're going to give up. So this will make sure that your workflow will not wait for an infinite amount of seconds until it will move on to the next node. By the way, if you want to have a more hands-on approach with learning N at N, AI automations and AI agents, then you can join our paid school community. Because in here we have created a zero to n at n hero course where we take you from complete beginner to expert in n at n and AI automation. And beside the zero to n at n hero course, we also have credential tutorials. So here we have a step-by-step -step process on how you can connect some of the most popular softwares with n at n. And beside the courses, we also have a community of like-minded people who are all interested in getting better and learning more about AI automations. And if you're, for example, facing a problem when creating one of your automations or AI agents, then you can just post the problem in the community and then we and the community will always help you. So if you're interested in being a part of this community, then the link for it will be standing in the description. Okay, so this is how the HTTP request note works in n at n. And now you're able to connect with every API you want. And if you have a question, then leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.